Hey Maker, welcome to my channel. If this is your first time joining me, my name is Christina Nicole, and I am a product photography coach teaching makers like you how to take your own high quality product photos that actually attract more customers and make more sales for your product based business. In this video, I'm going to take you inside of Canva and show you how to get that pure white background for your product photos using the background remover tool. Before we jump into today's training, I do want to mention that there are a lot of different ways to create those studio shots of your products on a pure white background. The method you will see me use in this video is just one way. If you do not use Canva Pro, then this training may not be for you. If you're using a different software, let me know in the comments and I will do my best to create a similar training on the software you currently use. Quick disclaimer, the background remover tool and a few other features I'm going to show you in this video require a Canva Pro subscription and they're not available on the free Canva account. So currently, as I'm recording this video, Canva Pro costs about $12.99 a month or you can pay yearly at $119.99. I am a Canva Pro partner and receive a small commission when you sign up for Canva Pro using my link. If you're interested in starting your free trial of Canva Pro today, I'll post my link in the description below this video. Now let's jump into Canva and I'll show you just how easy it is to use. So this is the home page of Canva. And the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go to the top right hand corner and click create a design. And we're going to edit photo. I'm going to pull the image, start with this one, click open. Now it's going to bring you to a page here where you can actually do the edits on this page, or we can go to use in a design that's going to take us one step further. I personally recommend clicking use in design because you do get more features and you have more ability to do additional stuff inside of Canva. So this I think is just more so kind of a quick editor option, but if we click use in design, we're gonna get additional features here. So the first thing we're gonna do is we wanna make sure, so if I tap outside of the screen, you notice that the actual image is not highlighted, okay? We wanna make sure, and we also lose our toolbar up here. So you wanna make sure that you tap the image so that it has this purple highlight around it. And then we go to edit image. And the first thing, your side panel over here may look a little different. It kind of depends on what features you've used because we recently used will pop up. First thing you're gonna wanna do is hit background remover. And then we're gonna wait while it actually does that. A few pro tips here, anytime you want to utilize a background remover type option or a selection type option in any other photo software, Having contrast in the image is super helpful. What that means is that you, the color of your actual product or what you're trying to remove is going to be kind of opposite or different, different in color of your background. So here we have kind of a gray dog. The background is white, but underexposed. We also have a little bit of white on the product. So this, this product may cause us some problems inside of the Canva background remover because we have similar coloring here, especially right here in this portion. Let me zoom in and show you. It's gonna be a little difficult for it to detect that line, okay? So that just makes it more difficult sometimes. Some other areas that may present a problem here are you can still actually see some of the clay here and we're going to see if it actually picks that up so let's go ahead and click background remover we're going to let it do its magic okay and overall it's not too shabby did a pretty good job around the mouth of the dog but we are missing a little bit of those those features in the feet where there was not actual paint on the clay. So what we're going to do, I'd like to be able to get those back because whenever we're doing any type of product photography, we want to make sure the image is as true to real life as possible. So what we're going to do, and I do not believe that this portion here is available in that quick edit portion that first popped up. So this is another reason why we are coming into, into this here. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to actually restore. So we're going to click restore and that brush size is a little large. So we're going to go and decrease our brush size. We're also going to zoom in so we can get nice and close. And we're going to put some of this, this detail back here. So we're going to take it out far enough to where we can actually see the line in the backdrop. And then we're going to come in and click erase. And I'm going to bring that size down even more. And then we're just going to make sure that we're getting that portion in there as well. Okay, now one thing I'm going to do, if you notice here, I'm going to zoom in as far as I can so you can see. Notice how this line is blurred and this one is a little more jagged and sharp that has to do with the brush being as small as it is so we're actually going to increase the brush and restore this back we're not going to go that big well, not that big either let's try a 10 and we're going to kind of put see if we can get a little more of a spread on that so it's a little less defined okay it's not as defined as or as blurry as the upper part, but that's okay. It's a little better. We're going to do the same thing here. I think we had a little bit on this side. So again, I'm going to overextend it just so I can see more. And then we're going to go in into the eraser. keeping some of that original product there. And we're gonna have to go smaller on our brush size to get into that corner. Okay. Go ahead and zoom out. I'm going to fix this just a little bit because I just don't like how peaky it looks. And that's okay. So overall, it did, did really well. Now, if you do not have to use the restore option or erase option to clean up the remover, then you will have an option to apply the effect down here. And that's what you'll need to do. So we're going to click done. And it's going to allow us to apply now because we made adjustments. Okay, so now that we've done that, we've applied the background remover. What we want to do is we want to go in and actually create a shadow. Because as it stands right now, the product kind of just looks like it's floating. And when we have three-dimensional products that are of size, even though this product is only about two inches, it is going to create some type of shadow and that's going to continue to give it kind of that depth and dimension. So same thing, we're gonna to wanna to make sure that our actual image is highlighted. We're gonna go into edit image and we're actually gonna go, probably for you, it's gonna be down here under tools. Um, I use it, so we're gonna click shadows and we're gonna do a drop shadow. The reason we do a drop shadow is because it basically emulates the light coming from a specific direction. So a couple of things to keep in mind here. If you have the presence of more light on one side of your product, so let's say our light's pretty even with this product, but let's say the presence of light was more apparent on the left side here, then we would want to make sure our shadow was on the right. If the presence of light was more apparent on this side, we're going to want to make sure our shadow is on the left. So you just want to make sure that what is happening with the light in your actual, on your actual product, you are emulating how that shadow would fall based on that light, just to kind of make sure that we're keeping it as realistic as possible. So the drop shadow option, if you just click it, it creates a pretty heavy, well-defined shadow. So what I like to do is go in and click it again. You'll see these little lines that allows you to make edits. So offset is going to stretch it, okay? And a lot of times we get this stretchy shadow when our light is actually lower. But I tend to keep mine, anytime I'm using Canva Pro and showing this as an example, 
I like to keep it around too. It's kind of a realistic shadow for placement. Now the angle, again, this is kind of one of those things you could play with it, but honestly, zero, it kind of creates just this nice shadow around the product that's kind of emulating the light coming in this way and the product being up against the backdrop and we get this nice shadow on the right hand side. Now the two things that I highly recommend adjusting are the transparency and the blur. So I like to take my blur up pretty high, typically always all the way, because that's gonna, once we reduce the transparency, it's going to add this really nice soft shadow. Okay, and then you can take the transparency down a little bit. I think 20 is kind of a good a good place to do that. So you'll notice here that I brought the transparency down. I want to show you if I were to take the blur away, the transparency kind of just lighten the shadow. The blur is going to allow it to kind of fade. Now, what that represents is having a larger light source that creates soft shadows, okay? Which is what I recommend for product photography. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and apply that. Look at that cute little guy, okay? So now what you can do is you can go to share and we're gonna click download, okay? And we can download this as a transparent background. Now you would use this option if you were to take the image and you were going to overlay it on a different, a different um, background or put it into a graphic for social or put it into like a brochure that you were going to have printed, anything like that. You would want the transparent image, which means that it does not have a background. It's just going to be this product that can be overlaid with the drop shadow. And you will see that this is a Canva Pro feature as well. If you intend on saving this as a PNG that you are then going to make as a transparent background that you're going to overlay somewhere else, I highly recommend shooting this all the way up because you're going to be overlaying it on another photo that you will then potentially be resizing. So we want to keep the best quality that we can. So we're going to go ahead and download that. I'll bring this into the frame so that you can see the gray shows that it's a transparent image and it does not have a background. Now, what you can also do straight from here, we can go ahead and we can create this little guy and make him bigger. Now, this is um, the size of the canvas, but if you want to, let's say we're creating this for um, Amazon. So we need a square. We can go ahead and we can resize this. Let's choose 3,000 by 3,000. We're going to copy it and resize it. Okay, and then we can go ahead and just let him fill the frame, move him to fill the frame, get a nice, nice image there. And then we can go to share. And we can even change here. You can change the color of the background, which we don't want to do because we want pure white, right? So we're going to go in and we're actually going to choose pure white. And if you don't know what that is, that is F, 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 six Fs. Okay. And then we go to share and we're going to click download and we're going to choose a JPEG. Okay. And more than likely based on these settings, if you are, we can do between 2000 and 3000 is a good pixel dimensions for uploading to say Amazon. Um, quality reduction will really depend on how large your file was to begin with, okay? We wanna try to get our quality to around 500, this is file size, so around 500 kilobytes is good for the online um, space. It'll load nicely. We won't have a lot of issues with it being too heavy for loading. So let's try that and then we'll check we'll check the metadata on it to see we're going to stick with an 80 and see kind of where that got our file size. So we're going to click download and then you'll notice here that it allowed us it's on a white background, right? So we've got that pure white background. I can pull info on it quick. Okay, and it's 307 kilobytes on disk. Okay, so that's fine. But if we want to go ahead and save it as a JPEG and push that quality all the way up. 
let's see where that gets our file size. Okay, so now we're at a 1.2 megabyte on disk. So that's that's too big. If you're looking at Etsy, Etsy says under one megabyte or you may have problems loading. So we just want to make sure that we're keeping keeping those low. So maybe a 90 JPEG, we can bump it up. Yeah, we can bump it up to 90. Let's see where that gets us. And again, this will just be something you have to test on your own. I'm just saving the image. I'm selecting get info when I right click on the image. And that's bringing in our metadata. So this is 426 at 90 for the image that I had. So that's 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 perfect. Okay, so just kind of test your own, see the best option for saving. I highly recommend that you keep the pixel dimensions between 2000 and 3000. You need information about resizing your images or you don't understand resizing. That is a three-step process. I'll link a video in the description below. If you have any questions in regards to the process that I did inside of Canva Pro today, please drop them in the comments below. And here is our final image. Please take the time to like this video if you found it useful. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you want to learn more about taking your own high quality product photos. See you next time.